بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم آه نبتدي الجلسه السمبوزيوم سانوبي جينزايم اي وود لايك تو انتروديوس بروفيسور جورجيو كان يو كان از بروفيسور فروم ايطالي Uh, he would like he will speak about uh, type 2 inflammation the role of key mediators in clinical hallmarks of uncontrolled sphere asthma So first of all, uh, Thank you very much for uh, the invitation. It's uh, a great uh, pleasure for me uh, to give uh, this talk. Uh, and uh, I will be very, very pleased to share uh, this uh, with my Egyptian uh, colleagues. Uh, the topic today is uh, the type 2 inflammation what are the key mediators of it, uh, and also what are the clinical hallmarks of uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, disease. First of all, uh, my disclosure of interests. And then let me, let me start from uh, the, let's say the definition of uh, asthma. Actually, asthma was defined uh, in the beginning as extrinsic and extrinsic uh, for then i mean the concept of xenophilic asthma, asthma was developed uh, and uh, i have to say that also the th2 asthma high and low was considered but this was uh, not uh, the correct uh, definition up to now why because uh, more recently we talked uh, about uh, we are talking about uh, a different uh, part so is type 2 asthma and this uh, came since uh, a few years also recognizing the, the heterogeneity of uh, asthma so let me uh, try to define uh, asthma well, asthma uh, as type 2 was uh, defined uh, by Gina, uh, not the very last one, as uh, an inflammation that is characterized by cytokines such as uh, IL-4, IL-5, IL-13, uh, which are often produced by the adaptive immune response or recognition of allergy. Well, let me let me go to uh, the recognition in this case because uh, a few years ago a new cell has been described the immune lymphoid uh, cell 2 in this case which is the one that uh, we are mainly interested in why this is important because the implication is that uh, we always consider the th2 cell the producer of the type 2 cytokines, whereas also the ILC2 are producing. So in this the case, we have uh, to uh, consider there are a spectrum of uh, uh, different uh, approaches. Why? I mean, uh, the type 2 inflammation is driven by both the innate and the ab uh, adaptive arms of the immune response. The adaptive ones uh, is the one we know, mainly driven by the T helper to uh, T cell. But uh, now we have to consider also the innate uh, type 2 uh, cell. In that I mean uh, the ILC2 cell, 
the mast cells and the basophils that are uh, part of the innate uh, lymphoid, uh, the innate immune response. What's the characteristics? Is that uh, uh, they are producing once more the type 2 uh, cytokines. And uh, what are the inflammatory cells that are involved in type 2 inflammation in asthma? The TH2 cells and the LC2 cells, as I mentioned, but also the B cells, the ones producing IgE, eosinophils, uh, biosophils, and mast cells, in other words, the effective cells, dendritic cells. Uh, uh, and uh, what about the inflammatory mediators? I already mentioned uh, IL-4 and IL-13, IL-5, and uh, the so-called uh, uh, alarms, and we'll see more in details uh, how they are uh, working uh, and uh, how they are playing a role in type 2 inflammation. First of all, there is a barrier dysfunction that is the uh, first stage of uh, the, this kind of uh, process. Why? It could be uh, a respiratory virus that is uh, working, uh, disrupting the epithelial uh, junction, or can be an allergen that is disrupting the barrier uh, integrity through degradation of different uh, proteins. Uh, what means that uh, this kind of uh, process uh, is uh, uh, inducing also IL-4 and IL-13 uh, to disrupt the epithelial site uh, proteins. And uh, to make uh, more complex, uh, on the left, let me start once again with the type 2 cytokine production. And uh, the cytokines that are produced mainly in the beginning in response to the outside uh, outdoor stimuli are uh, ILC2 and TH2 cells. And uh, the lymphokines uh, are IL4, IL13, and IL5. Then they are uh, working on uh, signaling. Why? Because uh, they are working on eosinophils, and we'll see later how important is this. They are working on uh, tissue remodeling, including smooth muscle and goblet set hyperplasia. But uh, we already mentioned the uh, uh, barrier disruption. But what is important uh, is uh, the so-called uh, adaptive immune response. This means the production of IgE, arming the effective cells, and then uh, releasing uh, uh, all the uh, mediators uh, you know quite well. And this uh, means uh, that these are the pathophysiological effects uh, of uh, the signaling of the uh, th, uh, th, th type 2 cytokine. Sorry. But this is uh, leading to, let's say, airflow obstruction, not just that, but exacerbation, bronchial obstruction, impaired lung function, and symptoms such as sneeze, this uh, with uh, shortness of breath, chest tightness, and cough. Now, what's the role of uh, type 2 cytokines? Let me go a little bit more inside. Well, first of all, uh, the uh, outdoor uh, stimuli uh, that I mentioned before, they are the first uh, inducing alarmings. I mean, uh, IL-25, IL-33, and TSRP. These uh, alarmins uh, are uh, working uh, or are acting on uh, IL-C2, for instance, uh, and this uh, means uh, that uh, eosinophils uh, are then activated in the bone marrow and they are uh, uh, then uh, included in uh, the trafficking to the tissues. And uh, there is also an upregulation of uh, different uh, mediator released by them. And keep in mind also the survival of the eosinophils. There is an autocrine uh, effect due to IL-5. Then, we shouldn't mention that IL-4 and IL-13 have been uh, evaluated as the one uh, uh, inducing uh, mast cell activation and basophil activation. And as I mentioned before, also the switching 
of uh, the B cells uh, to the Ig production. On the other side, uh, these uh, cytokines, uh, once more produced by these cells, uh, they are acting on the barrier disruption, as I mentioned before, and uh, also on uh, basement membrane thickening, cobbled cell cytoplasm leading to mucus uh, overproduction, and also to smooth muscle proliferation and contractility. Uh, so, as you can see, IL-4 and IL-13, they are playing really a key role, and uh, these uh, cells are the conductor of the orchestra, uh, if you wish. And uh, remind, uh, reminding uh, what is uh, the process, so this is the epithelium, and uh, then there is a pass through the antigen presentation, antigen presenting cells, to production of the cytokines, uh, but also the role of uh, ILC2 has to be considered. So, uh, trying to summarize, we have uh, mainly uh, different uh, uh, target of these uh, cytokines. I mean, uh, the eosinophils, uh, the tissue, in this case, of course, the bronchi, and uh, also the production, let's say the adaptive immune response uh, leading to the uh, production of a specific Ig. How IL-4 and IL-13 are working? Well, there is uh, a receptor that is called receptor 1 for uh, IL-4, and uh, it uh, is binding uh, just IL-4. Uh, but there is also uh, a common chain of uh, uh, these uh, receptors for the receptor of IL-13. Why? Because the receptor IL-13 has the alpha chain of the IL-4 receptor. And that's the reason why both IL-4 and IL-13 are working through this type 2 receptor. Where the receptor is expressed? Well, in a long list of cells, uh, where, of course, you can see that B cells uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, other uh, are uh, highly uh, bearing these uh, receptors, uh, but I wish to make you aware that uh, we are not just talking about uh, hematopoietic cells, but we are talking about uh, epithelial cells, smooth mass cells, and fibroblasts, uh, as uh, I will show you in detail. As far as the epithelial barrier uh, disruption, uh, IL-4 and IL-13 have been uh, demonstrated to be effective uh, in uh, uh, leading the integrity of uh, the epithelial uh, barrier. And uh, as far as uh, the uh, B cell switching to IgE production is uh, well known, uh, how they are uh, producing the cells uh, through the B cells and then uh, arming the effector uh, cells. And uh, the mast cell and the basal cells, as you can see, are armed of uh, uh, IgE and then the interaction with the specific allergen is the release of the mediators that are then uh, inducing the, the effect and, uh, and the symptoms. I wish to stress uh, how important are uh, the lung ILC2 cells. Since the beginning of the story, when uh, I mentioned uh, also how they are harmed by the so-called alarming, but the production of the different cytokines, uh, they have the same effect of uh, the cytokines, uh, uh, the type 2 cytokines, uh, I said before, on eosinophils, uh, on the structure of uh, uh, the bronchi, and uh, also on uh, uh, muscle on, and, and basal. Now, let me uh, remind you some uh, uh, original uh, research I did a long time ago with my friend Bruno Daron in Paris, uh, we published uh, uh, as a pioneer the effect of interleukin 4 and 13 on human lung 
fibroblasts, looking at uh, the possible implication in asthma, and uh, also how the adhesion molecules were upregulated uh, using IL-4 and IL-13 in human lung fibroblasts. What we demonstrated is uh, that uh, there was an internalization of uh, these uh, two cytokines uh, in a human lung fibroblasts in the IL-4 and IL-13. What does it mean? It means uh, that the fibroblast has the receptor for IL-4 and IL-13, and the interaction with the fibroblast uh, is leading to uh, two major uh, events. Proliferation of the fibroblasts and uh, um, induction of the modification from uh, fibroblast to myofibroblast. And so this is uh, playing a, a key role in airway remodeling. Now, airway remodeling is uh, leading uh, mainly by IL-13. And uh, this means the smooth muscle uh, proliferation, the subepithelial fibrosis and uh, collagen deposition, and uh, the goblet cells hyperplasia, as I mentioned before, and uh, they increase the basement uh, membrane thickness. And uh, as far as uh, the pathophysiology of asthma, we mentioned uh, what, were, what is the importance in epithelia, on the epithelial uh, of uh, the bronchi, uh, with the overproduction of uh, mucus, uh, production, induction of uh, uh, nitric oxide, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk uh, later about that. The position of uh, collagen and the goblet cell hyperplasia, but also on uh, uh, the uh, muscular uh, uh, part, in other words, on smooth muscle uh, for proliferation, contractility, and activation. Now, as far as the pathophysiology of asthma, there are different steps. And as I mentioned, increase the phenol, increase the uh, uh, nitric oxide is uh, a quite important one. And uh, this is uh, played uh, by the epithelium. And uh, whereas the smooth muscle, as I mentioned, uh, is a different, uh, has a different uh, story. Now, uh, let me go to the eosinophils. While the eosinophils, as I mentioned, IL-5 is induction, uh, activation, and survival, and mobilization, and uh, this mobili mobilization uh, through the expression of uh, adhesion molecules on uh, endothelial cells, for instance, uh, uh, is regulating the trafficking. But the trafficking means uh, that we have to, uh, the eosinophils has to reach the and home, uh, the lung in this case. And the survival at peripheral tissue is increased by IL-5. And uh, this was uh, demonstrated uh, as uh, far as our mind is concerned, because uh, this uh, eosinophil infiltration is, uh, uh, um, is due also to IL-4 and IL-13. But what I mean is important is that eosinophils, uh, I mean, uh, are uh, key players in uh, keeping the long-term uh, type 2 inflammation. Don't forget that they are uh, releasing uh, substances, uh, and uh, in, among them, uh, IL-4, IL-13, and IL-5. Now, what about uh, airway remodeling? I already mentioned uh, some of uh, this, but the environmental triggers are inducing the type 2 uh, cytokine. They are uh, injuring uh, the epithelia, and then there is a repair. But uh, the disruption is then uh, looking, uh, is then inducing the inflammation. And we were talking about uh, the airway remodeling with uh, the different uh, steps uh, since uh, the uh, epithelial shedding, the smooth muscle proliferation, uh, and uh, the uh, basement uh, uh, membrane thickness. And then we have uh, pro-inflammatory mediators. 
but uh, then uh, it's a circle. Why? Because then we have type 2 inflammatory cells and mediators that are increasing and keeping uh, uh, the process. What are the key drivers? IL-4 for TL, TS2 cell differentiation. IL-13, I mentioned before, so I will uh, skip the, the description. And then IL-5 on eosinophils. So these are the three major points, as I described before. But uh, these kind of processes then uh, inducing fibrosis and airway remodeling, B-cell isotype switching, epithelial barrier dysfunction, and uh, eosinophil recruitment and trafficking to the tissues. Uh, what are the key drivers? We already know. And uh, I will just to summarize uh, briefly here uh, the B cell activation, the mucus uh, hypersecretion and uh, the remodeling, and uh, also uh, the eosinophilic activation. What I wish to stress is uh, how uh, these uh, uh, processes are interconnected and is a sort of loop. Now, what are the clinical markers of uh, type 2 inflammation? And then I go to GINA 2020. Why? Because the type 2 inflammation is characterized by increased level of eosinophils and or increased pheno and maybe accompanied by atopy. So, uh, the type 2 inflammation and the non-type 2 inflammation. Uh, type 2 elevated uh, pheno, blood eosinophilia, tissue eosinophilia, and uh, elevatum uh, serum Ig. And uh, you might have a variable response to corticosteroid, uh, whereas uh, on the other side, this is a poor response to corticosteroid. There is a type 2 uh, target uh, inflammation, uh, whereas here is... Uh, airway neutrophilial palsy granulocytic, there is obesity and lack of response to targets of type 2 inflammation. Uh, there is uh, a commonality, this means uh, comorbidities with other type 2 disease. Unfortunately, today I have no time to go inside this uh, point. But uh, Gina uh, recognized that uh, nowadays there are uh, uh, also uh, uh, data concerning uh, the blood eosinophils that should be considered at different stages, uh, at least uh, more than 150 per microliter, pheno more than 20 ppb, sputum eosinophils more than 2%, uh, the Diagnosis of allergen-driven uh, uh, asthma has to be considered too, but also the need for uh, uh, continuous treatment with uh, OCS, which is one of uh, the key points uh, nowadays. So summarizing the key drivers, I wish to stress one more the concept of uh, the eosinophilic role, of the effect of cells and the adaptive immune response uh, and uh, the effect uh, on uh, the tissue of uh, the lung. Now, eosinophils are uh, very important for uh, surviving and trafficking, leading to the infiltration of uh, the lung. The pheno. Pheno is uh, produced by epithelial cells. And uh, in a uh, normal airway, you do not find it, whereas uh, you have high level of nitric oxide in the uh, in asthmatic uh, airway. And uh, pheno, as I mentioned, is produced by normal epithelial cells at very low level, whereas high level of pheno are induced by uh, type 2 uh, cytokines uh, in, uh, and there is also inflammatory cell uh, recruitment and uh, uh, the other effects. 
high phenol levels are expressed during inflammation, and of course, uh, phenol, the exhaled and nitric oxide, is increased. So, in other words, uh, phenol helps identify airway inflammation and uh, to support, uh, if the case, uh, also the diagnosis uh, of uh, ALMA. ASMA, although it's not a diagnostic uh, uh, mark, is uh, for the definition of the phenotype. IgE production, of course, uh, is already mentioned uh, a lot, uh, and uh, uh, you know quite well how important is the role of the type 2 cytokines. So that's uh, working on the vessels, and uh, from the vessels uh, to the epithelials, uh, and then uh, also the production of uh, phenol through the epithelium. Phenol, eosinophilic uh, maturation, activation, and trafficking uh, to lungs, and serum IG, three of uh, the myom biomarkers uh, that are characterizing the type 2 inflammation, and having as a target, uh, of course, uh, uh, the bronchial tissue in uh, with all the cases that uh, you can see through these uh, three biomarkers. Of course, when you look at, uh, you have uh, overlapping in this case to better define what is the type two inflammation. And uh, this is just, uh, is not uh, the reality, but this is just to, to show you how important it is uh, to follow in the phenotyping of the patient, uh, the use of the different uh, phenotype. And uh, keeping in mind, uh, since uh, we were mainly, we are, we are talking about the need of the use of the oral corticosteroids, that whenever you are using oral the corticosteroids, you are reducing the type 2 inflammation biomarker. So you, you should be very, very uh, uh, concerned about uh, the OCS. Type 2 severe asthma, okay, GINA and the ERS ATS are giving us uh, the severe asthma criteria. And uh, then GINA is giving us also what is the checklist for the type 2 uh, inflammation. The eosinophils, the phenol, the sputum eosinophils whenever possible, the uh, allergen-driven uh, uh, diagnosis and the need for the maintenance uh, on oral corticosteroids. What is the impact of type 2 inflammation of lung physio physiology? I, I already spent uh, quite a lot of time in describing what are the modifications uh, uh, induced of, by the type 2 uh, cells. Uh, what I mean is that uh, the final result is airway obstruction and, of course, impaired lung function. What's the key message? The key message is that the type 2 inflammation is a key driver of uh, severe asthma, the type 2 uh, high severe asthma. And uh, the type 2 biomarkers are clue in a phenotyping and management uh, of uh, severe asthma. I wish to thank you all for uh, your attention. Uh, my co-workers in uh, Humanitas University in Milan, and uh, if needed, uh, you can reach me uh, through mail at this address. Thank you very much for your attention. Professor Canonica, come stai? Tutto bene? Ah, 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 bene, grazie. Bene. Grazie, Mela, for uh, 
la lectures uh, please uh, my first questions what about the biomarkers in your daily practice and daily clinic did you use to, to identify this type 2 patients and what's about pheno in your daily practice well i've seen that nowadays pheno is absolutely uh, to be used and uh, one of my coworker uh, enrico heffler recently published uh, a memorandum uh, how to use uh, and uh, i mean how to use uh, for uh, management uh, of uh, asthma and uh, if uh, since he is a practical guide i mean uh, whenever needed uh, i can uh, share with you all uh, this kind of approach and this was under the uh, endorsement uh, of the italian society of respiratory disease and the italian society of allergy asthma and clinical immunology so is uh, is uh, uh, a partnership of uh, the different societies but uh, since uh, i mean uh, fino is uh, easy to detect is non invasive and let me also add that it is uh, cheap i think uh, that nowadays uh, uh, we cannot uh, miss the opportunity to have uh, this uh, uh, option to evaluate uh, uh, inflammation. And in addition, I have to say that also the regulatory authorities are telling us that uh, this is one of the criteria for prescribing uh, a biologic. Being this the case, uh, I think that uh, it should be used uh, in uh, the centers, but I have to say that uh, we are also promoting it to be used uh, uh, for uh, following the patients, even the ones that are uh, e just uh, on uh, treatment. And you probably know that Liam Heaney in, in the UK was using pheno to detect if the patients uh, were or not uh, adherent uh, to treatment. Uh, thank you, Professor Canonica. I would like uh, to thank you. Uh, it's our pleasure to be with us. Thank you. Uh, I would like to ask you about what are the clinical implications of type 2 inflammations and uh, how can I either identify patients with type 2 inflammation presenting at my clinics uh, with asthma without no complications? Well, uh, let me first uh, answer to, uh, to the first part of uh, your question. I think uh, that uh, we are in a changing scenario. Why? Because uh, type 2 inflammation, including both the adaptive and uh, the innate immune response, uh, is uh, nowadays uh, indicating different, uh, different diseases. And uh, when I mean different diseases, uh, I mean that they, were, they have been seen separately for a long time. I'm talking about uh, asthma, chronic rhinosinusitis uh, with nasal polyposis, atopic dermatitis, uh, eosinophilic esophagitis, uh, and some other ones. I have to say that since uh, we are working nowadays in uh, multidisciplinary teams with uh, the gastroenterologist, with the ENT, and of course with the dermatologist, I think that uh, we are discovering more and more uh, the, the so-called commonalities, in other words, uh, the comorbidities. And I think that uh, this is uh, really one of the, uh, the, the new approach, uh, in that I mean to treat the patient, not to treat the disease, as it was uh, uh, if the disease is seen by the, the single specialist. And this is uh, something that uh, has uh, to be promoted uh, everywhere. And uh, this is also coming from uh, the data of uh, our severe asthma registries. And uh, the severe asthma registries is, uh, is led by, by pulmonologists and allergists. So the other specialists are, are, are out. And that's the reason why we created also the uh, uh, the registry of uh, uh, nasal polyposis involving both allergists uh, and uh, and ENT. So at the end of the story, we have to communicate 
And uh, inside the different hospitals, uh, the suggestion is uh, to use the multidisciplinary approach. Professor Canonica, again, many thanks for participating with us in the conference. Hoping next year we will see you physical. I do hope so. Okay. Bye bye. Buenas Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. It's my pleasure now to introduce the president of the conference, Professor Yasser Mustafa, head of the department at Jams University. His talk will be about the diplomat as integrating treatment for severe asthma. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, now uh, we are going to apply what uh, Mr. Kanonika introduced to the, uh, the problem of type 2 asthma and type 2 inflammation in asthma. Uh, we are going to speak about one of the promising biological therapy, Tupilumumab, uh, integrating novel therapies in severe asthma. Hi, Dr. Monica Rayahn, a lot of work. There is a slide that he has prepared for us, so we will talk about it quickly. Still, GINA 2020 recommends stepwise control-based asthma treatment approach. We still we have step five, which is the headache, the pain for us all. العينين اللي بيحتاجوا اوبتيمم ثيرابي انكلودنج كورتيكوسترويد سيستميك اورال كورتيكوسترويد اند ستيل وي ار نوت ويل كنترولد ودي الاريا اللي دخل فيها النيو بايولوجيكال ثيرابي زي ما هنشوف دلوقتي. الافيلابل ويبونز حاليا او تولز هي الانهيلد ستيرويد والليكوترايم موديفاينج ايجنتس واللونج اكتنج لاب اللي هي اللاباز واللاما والسيوفيلين والاورال كورتيكوسترويد وقول are effective, all are good in, uh, in management and in controlling about 80% or 70 to 80% of our asthmatics. Like and still we have uh, 23 to 32% of patients, according to many studies uh, done all over the world, uh, uncontrolled or uh, did not achieve the well-controlled asthma after one year of uh, ICS lab use. Uh, Lower corticosteroids, although uh, patients, as all of us know, the patients lost step five, that are maybe also the stage of the hatta, maybe they have corticosteroids in practice, maybe they well controlled, but they are just controlled. Real side effects, the kind of the osteoporosis, the obesity, the anxiety, the diabetes, all cataract, the GI upset, so dyslipidemia, the infection. فمشكلة كبيرة جدا. The current treatment landscape, the biologics uh, core story. Uh, الحقيقة, uh, uh, by understanding what is behind uh, the cytokine inflammation in in in, in airway. ابتدينا ابتدت الشركات تشتغل على جزء البيولوجيكال ثيرابي مش بس في الاسمى لكن في كل الكرونيك انفلاماتوري ديزيز. في الاريا بتاعتنا عندنا ثلاثه مهمين الانتي اي جي اي والانتي اي ل 5 والانتي اي ل 4. ودول طبعا في البيشنتس وذ تايب 2 اسمى بيشنتس از اور بروفيسور منشن few minutes ago that uh, we consider them in oral corticosteroid dependent severe asthma as the need for maintenance oral corticosteroids may indicate type 2 inflammation and due to potential risk of these drugs. As I mentioned in Shoya, interleukin 4, 13 and interleukin 5 are the core in this type of inflammation and uh, we can assess these by uh, biomarkers we call them type 2 biomarkers, normal IgE, ulfino, or eosinophils. Accordingly, we classify our patients into allergic or eosinophilic type 2. We allergic be able to do the anti IgE or eosinophilic be able to do anti IL5. We type 2 target D type 2 targeted biologists will let me know that I should have you in anti IL4 lower by indirect way. We should have a receptor or be a shell as. Either against an interleukin 13. 
Uh, what is type of inflammation? Mr. Canonica mentioned this and mentions how to monitor such patients, how to diagnose them. We are uh, uh, the patients, uh, could patients have type 2 airway inflammation? Yes, we can treat them by blood xenophils more than 150. Uh, pheno more than uh, 20 PPP, uh, sputum is in Ophelia more than 2%, asthma and clinically allergen driven and or there is need for all our steroids. Uh, uh, all these uh, can uh, predict that this patient the eligibility of different drugs uh, available according to some uh, clinical and lab. For example, if the patient uh, had exacerbations in last year with uh, blood is inferior more than 150, with phenol more than 25, and need for maintenance or corticosteroids, and uh, this patient is eligible for interleukin, anti interleukin 4. Uh, if the patient has blood is nophilia more than one than 300 millimeter, uh, 300 uh, per MA per micro L, and these exacerbations in the last year, this may be more, benefit more from anti uh, IL-5. If the patient has exacerbations also and uh, has a, a manifestations of allergy manifested uh, with a specific IgE and total, total IgE and a specific IgE or, or positive uh, prick skin test, these patients may be more for anti-IgE. Uh, usually in their practice, uh, I visited before one of the center of excellence in Spain, they use sometimes two drugs, they use anti-IgE with, with anti-IL-5 or anti-IL-4 together. Biologic therapies for the management of uncontrolled persistent asthma, uh, we evolved it since uh, 2005 by uh, Omalizumab with anti-IgE, the Adam Wahid. احنا استعملناه وول اوفر ذا وورد استعملوه ولكن ما حسيناش يعني هو بيتحسن كاتيجوري من البيشنت لكن ما حسيناش ان هو حل المشكله 100% بدا بعديه الانتي اي 5 يظهر ريسليزوماب وبعدين ميبوليزوماب وبينريزوماب وفيري ريسنتلي سنه 2019 الدوبينوماب اللي هو الانتي اي 4 ريسبتور وزي ما قلنا ان هما currently EMA approved uh, uh, as add-on treatment for severe asthma كل واحد حسب نوع البيشنت اللي هيبقى مناسب فيه اكتر وزي ما قلت لحضراتكم ممكن يستعمل اكتر من واحد بالنسبة للدوبيدو ماب كور ستوري بتاعته اتفرج uh, على الفيلم ده how it works on IL-4 Dupilumab is a human monoclonal antibody and is the first dual inhibitor of IL-4 and IL-13 signaling. In the inflammatory process, IL-4 binds the IL-4 receptor alpha subunit and IL-13 binds the IL-13 receptor alpha 1 subunit. Dupilumab binds specifically to the IL-4 alpha receptor alpha subunit and blocks signaling of the type 1 receptor. Dupilumab also blocks signaling of the IL-13 and IL-4 by the type 2 receptor via the shared IL-4 receptor alpha subunit, blocking the IL-4 and the markers of type 2 inflammation, including IgE, periostin, and multiple pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines, as well as fractional exhaled nitric oxide, pheno, a marker of lung inflammation, Dupilumab is the first dual inhibitor of IL-4 and IL-13 signaling. The film is a cartoon that we يعني ب ب بيوري اللي إحنا شوفنا دلوقتي. Dupilumab is a human monoclonal antibody that binds specifically to IL-4 receptor, the shared receptor subunit for IL-4 and IL-13, thus inhibiting the dual signaling pathway of both these side two kinds. ده المنظر المرعب بتاع الكاسكيد بتاع السيتوكاين والفيجوس سيركلز اللي بتخلي فيه حاجه اسمها كرونيك ازما يعني ما بقاش بالاكسبوجر تو الرجين ده رياكشن شغال الدوبلوماب بيقوم قافل كل السكه دي اللي هي معظم الكاسكيد بتاع الانفلاميشن 
الدوز ريكومند الدوز في العيانين الاو سي اس ديبندنت او سيفير اسمع او سيفير اسمع ويز كوموربيد اتوبيك ديرماتيتس او كرونيك راينو ساينوسايتس ويز نيزل بوليبوزيز انيشال دوز 600 ملي جرام سب كوتينيوسلي تو امبولز الواحده 300 تو ويكس ليتر افري اذر ويك دوزنج يعني 300 سب كوتينيوسلي افري تو ويكس بعد كده بروفد في الستاديز اللي اتعملت ان بيبقى في ستيرويد ريدكشن او ستيرويد سبيرنج افكت يبدا ستيرويد ريدكشن بعد كده فيري فيري جرادوال نوت ستوب ستيرويدز سادن It should be a long-term treatment. The need for continued therapy should be considered at least on an annual basis as determined by physician assessment of the patient's level of asthma control. A patient may self-inject dopamumab. ما بحتاجش تحضير معين زي الأوميزومب. طيب ايه الكلينيكال ترايلز او الكلينيكال ديفلوبمنت ترايلز اللي خلت هذا الدراج ياخد ابروفل واحده من الدراجز الكبيره اللي هي الكويست ستادي الكويست ستادي دي 52 ويك يعني حوالي سنه ستادي ان مودريت تو سيفير ان كنترولد بريزيستنت اسما كان فيها 1902 بيشنتس الاي تي تي بوبوليشن ان مودريت تو سيفير ان كنترولد بريزيستنت اسما ان كنترولد ويز ميديوم هاي دوز اي سي اس ويز اب تو تو كنترولرز البيز لاين باي ماركر فاليو ما كانش فيه ما كانتش محدده باي ماركر فاليو معينه ميديوم تو هاي دوز So OCS use ما كانش فيه the objectives can evaluate efficacy and safety of dopamineap compared with placebo in patients with persistent asthma. The primary endpoint uh, annualized rate of severe exacerbation events over the 52 weeks and absolute change from baseline in pre bronchodilator FEV1 at week 12. في في جنرال في كل العيانين الحقيقه بالنسبه للان فانكشنز ممثله في الاف اي في 1 والكواليتي اوف لايف والاسما كنترول والريت اوف اكسسبيشن ذير واز ا سيجنيفيكانت ريدكشن في العيانين اللي كانوا على دوبلو ميما اللي باللون الاسود دول اللي واخدين البلاسيبو واللي باللون في 200 ملي جرام بلاسيبو والجراي 300 ملي جرام بلاسيبو الدوبلو ماب 200 ملي جرام باللون الاصفر واللي 300 ملي جرام باللون الازرق. هنلاقي ان في اباوت 48 تو 46 في العيانين اللي خدوا الدوبلوماب بالنسبه للاكزاسبيشن ان ريليشن تو بلاسيبو وتقريبا التو دوزز كانوا قريبين من بعض في كل الريزلتس اللي خاصه بالاسسمنت اوف ذا دراج. طيب لو خدنا البيشنتس اللي كانوا الرجيك البيشنس اللي كان احنا قلنا ما كانش فيه في الاول في الاستراتيفيكيشن اوف بيشنس اي بايس ناحيه جروب معينه كان في سيجنيفيكانت ريدكشن ان اكسسبيشن اند امبروفمنت ان لانج فانكشن ان بيشنس هو ديد اور ديد نوت ميت ذا كرايتيريا فور اليرجيك اسما زي ما حضراتكم شايفين في كل الكولمز كان التحسن في صالح الدوبلوماب سواء كان 200 او 300 ملي جرام بالنسبه للبيشنتس اللي هم ان كنترول بريزيستنت اسما اند كوموربيد عندهم كوموربيد كرونيك راينوساينوسايتس ونيزل بوليبوزس نفس الحكايه كان في ريدكشن في الاكسسبيشن ريت وكان في امبروفمنت في اللانج فانكشن سيجنيفيكنتلي مش بس كده كان هذا الامبروفمنت ابتدى بعد حوالي اربع او خمس اسابيع يبان وبعدين من الاسبوع ال 12 كان سستيند لحد اخر الاستاد بالنسبه للكاتيجوري الثاني من البيشنتس اللي عندهم كوموربيد الرجيك راينايتس كان في سيجنيفيكانت ريدكشن في الـ في الاكسسبيشن ريت وسستيند امبروفمنت في اللانج فانكشنز لو جينا على الماركرز اللي اتقاست في الاستادي دي كذا ماركر منهم الفينو لاحظنا ان الفينو بيبتدي ينزل من الاسبوع الثاني والنزول ده سستيند لحد اخر الاستادي بالنسبه للاي جي اي بينزل ببطء شويه اوفر 24 ويكس وبعد كده بيبدا يبقى مور اور ليس ستيبل لحد اخر الاستاد بالنسبه للتوتال اي جي اي ليفل ان بيشنتس هو ديد اند نوت ميت الرجيك ازما كرايتيريا نفس الحكايه في العيانين اللي عندهم الرجيك ازما من الناس اللي ما عندهمش لكن بيبقى واضح وسستيند لحد اخر الاستاد. 
بالنسبه للناس بالنسبه للسبيسيفيك اي جي اي اذا كان اجينست الاسبرجيلس سبيشيز فيوماجيتس او الديرماتوفايتس او الكات داندر او الدوج داندر او الجيرمان كوكروش احنا ما عندناش جيرمان كوكروش آه وغيرها آه بنشوف او بنلاقي في امبروفمنت سيجنيفيكانت امبروفمنت في الليفل بتاع السبيسيفيك اي جي اي ويتش از سستيند اول اوفر ذا ستادي بالنسبه للاذرز ماركر زي الايو توكسين نفس الحكايه والبيريوستين نفس الحكايه بينزل خلال 2 اور 3 ويكس ماكسيمم 4 ويكس ويبقى سستيند لحد اخر الستادي البلاد ايزينوفيليا بتعلى في الاول عامله زي الاي جي كده مع الاوميليزوما بتبتدي تعلى وبعدين بتنزل جرادوال لحد ما توصل للبيز لاين بتاعها بالنسبه للسيفتي ات واز ويل توليريتد وما كانش في اي سيجنيفيكانت ديفرنس ما بينه وما بين البلاسيبو الا بس في بعض الانفلاماتوري ماركرز او بعض الانفلاماتوري ساينز في السايت اوف انجكشن Another study اللي هي الفنتشر ستادي اتعملت على البيشنس اللي هم عندهم سيفير ستيرويد ديبندنت ازما اللي ماشيين على اورال كورتيكو ستيرويد التانيين ما كانوش ماشيين على اورال كورتيكو ستيرويدز ونو بيز لاين باي ماركر ريستريكشن اولسو وهاي دوز اي سي اس وديلي او سي اس مور ذان 6 مانث بدوز من 5 ل 35 ملي جرام وكان الايفالويشن برضو الاوبجيكتيفز تو ايفالويت ذا افيكسي اند سيفتي كومبيرد ويز بلاسيبو فور ريديوسينج ذا يوز اوف مينتينز مينتننس اور كورتيكو سترويدز ان ساتش بيشنس وبرسنتج ريدكشن اوف اور كورتيكو سترويدز باي ذا اند اوف ذا ستادي اللي كانت مدتها 24 اسبوع هنشوف هنا الحقيقه ان العيانين اللي كانوا خدوا الدوبلوماب حصل ريدكشن في الاورال كورتيكو ستيرويد دوز فروم بيز لاين ثرو ويك 24 تو سيجنيفيكانت ريدكشن الحقيقه باي ذا اند اوف ذا ستادي برضه نفس الحكايه الريت اوف اكزاسربيشن قل جدا في العيانين دول واللانج فانكشن اف في اي في 1 امبروفد سيجنيفيكانتلي والكواليتي اوف لايف اتحسنت كتير بالكوشن Reduction in the dose of OCS حصل تقريبا في الجروب بتاع الدوبلومان reduction we can we could reduce the dose of oral corticosteroids by more than 75% ده كان في العينين اللي عندهم severe steroid dependent asthma and comorbid chronic rhinosinusitis with nasal polyposis نفس الإفكت لما جينا قسنا until the end of the, of the study for the patients in the head of the map we in IGE gradual decrease up 12 weeks and then uh, uh, slowly decreased till the end of the trial uh, EU toxin 3 as a biomarker decreased also by the week 4 and sustained till the end of the trial and periosteine again also the same by week 4 decreased significantly and sustained till the end of the trial Again, xenophils increase uh, in the start of the trial and then uh, uh, decrease gradually until reaching or approaching the normal uh, uh, of the baseline level by the end of the study. Again, the uh, uh, toleration, to tolerability or the uh, safety, it is well tolerated and there was no significant uh, serious side effects, uh, either uh, treatment related adverse events or serious adverse events in the group. Of uh, extend the study more significant وتاخد FDA approval transversal late breaking session at the virtual European Respiratory Society Congress 2020 the phase three open label extension study خدوا uh, studies اللي فاتت دي كلها وعملوا لها extension في التايم كانت على كانت احنا كنا في الاستاد الاولانيه زي الكويست كانت 52 اسبوع هنا 96 اسبوع يعني حوالي سنتين هو بارتيسيبيتد ان ذا بريفيوس ستاديز وشملت 2282 بيشنتس كلهم مودريت تو سيفير كثير منهم اورال كورتيكوسترويد ديبندنت We can, uh, according to Quest, will venture, can receiving uh, dopamine map to meet milligram every two weeks. Uh, 
We can evaluate to evaluate the long-term safety, tolerability, and the efficacy of uh, dopamine in an open-label extension study of patients with asthma who complete a previous asthma dopamine study. يعني مكتفوش بسنة أنا المدة سنة تانية وكان primary endpoint the proportion of patients experiencing any treatment emergent adverse event up to week 96. Now, uh, a second end point in the annualized severe exacerbation rate up to 96 weeks, uh, if, if you want to weeks 96, uh, blood is in the field and total serum IG level up to week 96. الشيك معقد شوية بس هو يعني بيلخص أو بيوري عدد الحالات اللي كانت بادية من كل الستاديز السابقة واكستندد في هذه الستادي كانت استادي اللي هي البي تو بي والكويست والفينجر طبعا الريزلتس الحقيقة كان في سيجنيفيكانت بيرزيستنت لو اكزاسربيشن ريت اب تو 96 ويكس و Reduction were uh, numerically higher for patients with a type 2 phenotype at parent study baseline. Uh, the annualized severe exacerbation rate has a significant reduction. If we take the alwan, the patients who are the overall exposed population, the ones who are in the alwan, which are the solid colors, we the uh, exposed patients with type 2 phenotype at, 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 at parent study, the ones who have the most than 150 or the most than 25 PPP, they are the ones who colons. لان احنا قلنا في الترايلز كلها ما كانش في سيلكشن للباترن بتاع الانفلاميشن في كل البيشنتس اللي دخلوا الستاديز قبل كده. اجين ذير ويز سيجنيفيكانت سستيند امبروفمنت ان لانج فانكشن اب تو 96 ويكس اند لانج فانكشن امبروفمنت وير نيوميريكالي هاير فور بيشنتس ويز تايب 2 فينوتايبس ات بيرنت ستادي بيز لاين. We can feel reduction for blood is in the to below parent study baseline level by the end of the uh, extended uh, trial. The serum total IgE, as we observed it before, begins in the sura al had week 48, and after that, it will be approaching the baseline. اخر حاجه بحب انوع عنها الادفنت اونلاين ديجيتال اديوكيشنال بلاتفورم اوفر فيو ده ده واحد من الوسائل الاونلاين فور كونتينوس ميديكال اديوكيشن اند انكريز اويرنس اباوت ذيس تايب 2 انفلاماتوري ديزيزز اللي هي بدات نشوفها ونهتم بيها وتعاكسنا الحقيقه في المانجمنت الادفنت از ان انوفيتيف اند هوليستيك جلوبال اديوكيشنال بلاتفورم providing knowledgeable and expert guidance on type 2 inflammatory diseases through science-driven patient-focused education to address the need of patients throughout their journey from disease assessment to treatment optimization to long-term disease control. The Advent Digital Platform Online Type 2 Educational Hub the site of our adventprogram.com education across uh, multiple type 2 inflammatory diseases the most important the atopic dermatitis and asthma and chronic rhinosinusitis with uh, nasal polyposis from a variety of formats expert interview slide lectures video lectures patient videos even summaries uh, infographics interactive visuals and the fact that it's very helpful لو حضراتكم دخلتوه يعني فعلا مفيد جدا وفي ازاي النون هيلث كير بروفايدرز لو كان بيشنتس او غيره ممكن يستفيد برضو من هذا الموقع. الريجستريشن فروم هيلث كير بروفايدرز كان ريجستر فور ا بيرسونالايزد اكسبيرينس من خلال السايت وهيجي له الادفانت نيوز ليتر نوتيفايز وهيجي له ريجستريشن لوكين بروفايدرز داون لودبل كونتنت تو برودكت ريليتد ايديوكيشن وفيرشوال ايفنت ريجستريشن وغفرند باي لوكال ريجوليشنز كل ريجستريشن والبيرسونال انفورميشن بتبقى الحقيقه سكيور زي اي حاجه ده فيديو برضو اللي بيشتغل على الادفانت بروبلم Thank <laughs> you.
But if you look at the PROs, you realize that this patient is really suffering. How can we phenotype them? How can we figure out if they have type 2 inflammation? And then what are the options? We have a responsibility to advocate for our patients and to educate clinicians um, about this new way of thinking about airways disease and stratifying airways disease. الحقيقه بشكر سنوفي على يعني اتاحه الفرصه ليا ان انا ابقى يعني موجود معاكم في موضوع مهم زي ده وبشكرها برضو على يعني بيبقى الواحد دايما الشركات اللي بتبقى مهتميه بالكونتينوس ميديكال اديوكيشن ان هي يعني ما فيش مانع ان هي كل الفارماسيوتيكال كومباني دي ار اور بارتنر احنا لو ما عندناش دواء مش هنعرف نعالج العيانين لكن لما نهتم برضو بالجزء العلمي والجزء التعليمي والتثقيفي للاطباء الحقيقه ده بيبقى شيء جميل جدا ولما الشركه تحط جزء من 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 البروفيتس بتاعتها في حاجه زي كده والتقي بكم دائما على خير شكرا شكرا جزيلا استاذ دكتور ياسر مصطفى فور ذيس نايس توك دكتور ياسر بس هسالك بعض الاسئله كده البسيطه <تصفيق> 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 لا بس عشان الدواء ده جديد يعني 